Okay, good morning once again. We're not going to wait for uh, for our colleagues because of the, the time issue. They will be joining as we we proceed. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay, so um, at 11 hours, as agreed, it's uh, GIS, and today we want to look at the historical development of uh, GIS, okay? So what are we going to find in this, uh, in this talk or chat is uh, how Early man, uh, as they, how, how did they depict uh, features more like uh, in the map? First, we are going to do an introduction. Then we are going to look at uh, this figure, John Snow. How did he do uh, map depiction or GIS? Then we are going to look at the uh, we're going to look at Dr. Roger. Dr. Roger Tomlinson and the CGIS. Okay. We're going to move forward and look at the Howard T. T. Fisher. Okay. An important figure. Then we are going to have a look at um, commercial agencies and conferences that were involved in the historical development of uh, GIS. We're going to look at um, the period 1980s when there was some break, breakthrough. We're going to uh, look at um, talk about Jack Dangermond and the Ezri, Ezri, okay. Then we're going to look at the uh, other agencies. From, um, we're going to look at uh, the period from 1990s to date and the future. I'm sure that is where we'll end. Then we shall conclude and have a class, class exercise. So um, without, wasting much of your time. We, as part of our introduction, we are saying that the idea of portraying uh, different layers of data on a series of base maps had been there even before the invention of uh, computers, even before computers were invented, okay? And, uh, we begin by looking at how did early man depict, depict features. And so we are saying thousands of years ago, these people, early, early men, early humans, used to draw Pamawefilia, Valenga, Utunama, where they were hunting, they even draw the root sea, they even draw the tallies. Okay. So um for example, you have such cave paintings, even those, those were done by, by Heli, Heli men. Then the other important historical development happened in London with John Snow, okay? This John Snow guy was one of the earliest guys to use geographic method in depicting a, a phenomena. He used the arrows and points to show the direction of a source of cholera infection. You know that cholera disease. Okay, so he was studying that arrow upon firma point, paper, filiadro, point, and his study resulted in the identification of the source of cholera. Johnny, John Snow. Okay. From there, 
in the 20th century, we have Dr. Roger Tomlinson. This man is the father of GIS as we know it today, because he is the first person who developed a GIS system as it is today. Of course, there are those improvements, but the very first person is Dr. Roger Tomlinson. Okay. And uh, he, he lived in the in the 20th century, okay? And uh, this time there was a, a development of computer hardware, which was caused by nuclear research, you know, nuclear for energy, nuclear for weapons, and things like that. So because computers uh, were, develop, were developing this time, other people thought, uh -uh, let's use the same computers for mapping applications like him, Dr. Roger Tomlinson. Okay. Now, um, in 1962, Roger developed the first operational GIS system for the Department of Forestry and Rural Development in Ottawa, Canada, that is, okay. Why did they develop this um, Canada geographic system? Because they needed something that can store, analyze, and manipulate data collected for Canada land inventory. Okay, so they they were collecting data for for the land in Canada. Okay, so they wanted something that can store, can analyze, can manipulate data for for that. Okay. So um, in, 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 in the same sense, they were more like a classifying land in Canada based on the capability, okay? So they were looking at the, what is the potential of this land in terms of soil, agriculture, recreation, wildlife, forestry, and the many, many, many other things. So in the end, they developed this C, um, CGIS, Canada Geographic Information System, okay, which had the improved capability for map production, analysis, and such things as overlay, measurement, even digitizing. So it was far much better than what we knew we knew earlier, okay, which is why we are saying. Uh, Dr. Roger is the father of GIS as we as we we know it. And this same CGIS supported a national coordinate system. Now, connect this one well with where we are coming from. Yesterday we are talking about coordinate systems. So this um, CGIS supported a national coordinate system, a national coordinate system for, for Canada. Okay, and as I said earlier, this is the father of GIS as we know it. All right, away uh, forward um, and away from Dr. Roger, we have another important figure, which is Howard T. Fisher and the Harvard Laboratory for graph for computer graphics and spatial analysis. Most of the GIS individuals. Um, those important figures, at least most of them started from this lab, okay? The, which is why this, this, this man is also important in the historical development of what? Of GIS. Because in, in this lab, they were do, dealing with important theoretical concepts and the concerns to do with special data handling, okay? So as I said, um, most of those important figures in, in the 80s started from this, the same, the same lab. So amongst those important uh, individuals, they, they are those who started even uh, producing Tuma software code to a, to a GIS, such as the SIMAP, GRID, and the ODC, okay? 
And um, now, moving forward in the in the in the nineteen seventies, most of the development of uh, GIS happened in universities across the United States, in Canada, and the UK. Okay, during this period, so in these universities, Harvard is is one of them. Okay, and uh, forward, we have. Um, in, in the period 1970s and 1980s, we have commercial agencies and conferences, okay, which um, conferences which took place, okay. Now, amongst those, those commercial agencies, some emerged, you know, emerged the top in the niche, which, which we even have today, like ESRI the Environmental Systems Research Institute, which produces the ArcGIS, okay? Then we also have Inter Integraph, okay? Now, in this period now, there were a series of conferences to find the best way possible to handle anything to do with the GIS be it theoretical uh, underpinnings or backgrounds, how to handle analysis and things like that, okay? And the, these were the children of the 1980s. And the, it is in the same period that a landmark paper by this guy, James Corbett, on the GIS was released, okay? So we have uh, Integraph, we also have Esri there, if you can see here. Okay, this, this picture is common, you, you'll be meeting it. If you just type in the um, ArcGIS, I think something that looks like this will show up on your, on your, in, your, in your Google, okay. So as I said, uh, even other agencies joined in, in, in contributing to GIS, especially in the, in the US, okay? Like for example, the Army Corps of Engineers, they started developing software for managing land and the environment in the, in the, United, in the United States. Okay, and then in the same period, there was development of computers, okay, which is why today we even have laptops and these desktops which you can put on a table. So that development in computers also added, acted more like adding the development in, in, in GIS. And as these things were developing, people kept on now uh, producing and publishing what? GIS software. GIS software which came in terms of packages. Are we together? Okay. And as the, the same computing power increased, hardware prices were slashed. Okay. At least the computer became more affordable. And the, GIS was now being uh, becoming more adoptable for development development planning. Okay, so now let us uh, now look at uh, the breakthrough that happened in the in the 1980s. Okay, so we've already said that um, it is it was during this time that uh, personal computers were developed. And with that development, that development aided the development in, in GIS, okay? And um, I've already said these these points, that, which is why I'm um, I'm skipping them. But if you look at this relational database thing, I would love to skip it because it's part of your syllabus, and we'll come and look at it in the, in the, in term 
system too, okay? So more and better and more reliable systems were later on developed. And the government agencies now started using the same GIS for planning, okay, for mapping, planning, and designing, okay? So this, this time was a time for breakthrough in, in GIS. And the first textbook in GIS appeared in the in in 1986 okay and the a journal specifically for publishing gis uh, you know papers was even uh, introduced and still during the same time there were a series series of conferences to ask questions because there were still questions remaining especially the theoretical underpinnings or theoretical background of G GIS, okay? So now, because there were still questions remaining, that, that problem was an opportunity for a man called Jack Dangermond and the Environmental Systems Research Institute to date, okay? So this man, Jack Dangermond, um, on, a, on one of these conferences, published the theoretical underpinnings of GIS. Such questions as, why does GIS work? What is the theoretical standard for handling spatial data? So all of those questions in their background, Jack Dangermond did it and presented on the, one of these, these conferences. Jack Dangermond is the founder of ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute. The, the, the ArcGIS area, this is the man behind it. And according to my research, this man is still there. He's not dead, okay? So as I said, questions like how and why do GIS work? How can we make it better? What are the impediments to making them better? It was this man who propounded, okay, on these questions. And then um, forward in the 1988, this National Science Foundation in the United States also approved the National Center for GIS. Um, G, uh, GI information and analysis, okay? In, in terms of, uh, sorry here, I'm, I'm supposed to speak about uh, other agencies. Was that a question? Was that a question? Just, just a minute. Okay, now um, from Jack Dangermond, we, we look at other agencies and one of them is the National Science Foundation of the United States, which approved this National Center for GI Information and Analysis. Now, this National Science Foundation is still there. Just um, if you want to find out more, Google, they are there to promote the, science specifically in the in the united in the united states okay davis davis Mute yourself, okay? So um, this this NC. <coughs> Davis, mute yourself. Okay, so an another issue um, 
worth noting is that this any NCGIA started various uh, research initiatives in the same area of uh, of GIS. Wow, I'm having uh, sorry, I'm having uh, some problems here. Okay. Okay, then another um, agency that is worth mentioning is the European Science Foundation. They also started the, the research in the GIS data uh, programs, okay? And uh, this resulted in a series of specialist meetings and publications, of course, okay? And uh, in, uh, in, the, in 1998, the Association of uh, geographic information laboratories in Europe was founded. Okay, so these were involved in promoting academic teaching and research in uh, GIS. Just to mention, but a few. So this same uh, AGILE is the one that organizes annual conferences in uh, GIS. Just to head that. Um, uh, development information exchange and the uh, academic, you know, development in in the GIS. Okay, from the 1990s to date and ahead. So we want to see how have we moved from the 1990s to date, and what does the future look like in terms of uh, GIS? Okay. So we are saying uh, dur during the 1980s, there was a breakthrough okay, with those conferences, with those, the, um, with those conferences, with those the agencies, with those individuals, okay? So um, this period is characterized as a period of breakthrough of object orientation. Well, I will not dwell much on this because we, we, we are coming to these objects as we, we do um, ACMAP. But just a brief introduction, what we mean as objects are simply those, the, um, the, the shapes of objects, say a map and things like that, okay? That's what we mean. Then database design also, I'll not dwell much in, in, on that because we are coming to that. So Joy Informatics, which is basically GIS, now became recognized as a professional activity uh, during this time, okay? And still conferences were, uh, were taking place and they are still taking place today. Now, today we have the World Wide Web, which is the internet. And the internet has become a system. So where are we heading? We are saying internet is going to be applied and internet is going to be a fundamental part, or let me say an important part of GI, GIS, okay? And so GIS is now no longer restricted to mapping and mapping planning or survey organizations alone. It's entering the market even for businesses and for such things as Joe, Joe marketing. So GIS is expanding in terms of in terms of applications. Okay. So far, any questions? Very boring historical development. <laughs> so far, any questions? Hello? Yes, please. 
So I just want you to go back to the first scripts that you showed. Um, I joined late. Okay. Uh, okay, let me just go back there. But uh, realize that we our time here is limited. So where, where which, which one exactly? From the introduction part, sir. Okay, from the introduction, we didn't say much. We said the, the idea of portraying features in terms of layers was there even before computers were invented. Then we, from there, we moved it to early man. How did they use to depict the geographical phenomena? We are saying they were drawing Pamabwe, Valenga, Fidia, Akanama, no Tumatari is now, we can ama root somewhere in Amashipita. Okay. Then from there, we, we spoke about John Snow. We are saying this man started the cholera outbreak in London and he used points and the direction arrows to, to, to show the spread of cholera. And in the end, he identified the source of uh, the, the source of the source of the, the the disease. Okay. Can I go first to the conclusion? Because now we have been warned that time is running out. Okay, what is there on the conclusion? We are saying land represents some of the most important resources that humans have on this planet. And therefore, proper management of land is important. There is need to manage land resources. Uh, the need to manage land resources no doubt contributed to the development of GIS. This is an important uh, point here because you hear people saying, ah, GIS is independent from forestry, it's independent from natural resources. No, no, no. Actually, forestry, uh, land, natural resources, those are the things that uh, contributed to the development. GIS. You've seen what Dr. Roger Tomlinson did. It was because of land management and capability identification. Okay. So uh, again, development in computing power just added the development of what? Uh, GIS and the special science. Okay. And um, Jack Dangermond is actually the one who laid a, a firm foundation of the theoretical underpinning of the uh, development in GIS. All right, thanks. Now, from there, we move into our um, class exercise. And it says in about half an A4 page, summarize the history of GIS. Okay. So I think uh, that's the end of our session. Thanks very much for your attendance. Okay. Tomorrow, still the same time. Okay, okay. Let me just unmute Mr. Mwape. Yes, Mr. Mwape. Uh, sir, the, the same question you asked in wildlife, the history of wildlife management. Is it, is it here in Africa or Zambia or Wow. It says the history of who? wildlife management. Oh, no, you didn't specify. Yeah, it's the history of wildlife management. <laughs> uh, here in Zambia or Africa or just the whole world? The history of who? wildlife management. management. Now my question, sir, is uh, is it in Zambia? I, I didn't or? specify. I didn't specify. Why do you want it to be specific? What we are dealing with is the history of wildlife management, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. 
Davis Chizau, you are unmuting yourself. Any questions, please, before Akashita Takara put up? Yeah, yeah. Any questions? I'm going to follow my contributions. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to contribute to the film. Nga ni criticism much ta criticize mm? provided it's constructive criticism. I think it's okay. Basmati. Basmati mulenseka. I was at the coca from Maryland. Okay. <laughs> Yes, please. I've unmuted the Galax Co. I don't know. He's raised the. Yes. Vairaija. Marita Moko Fisama. And then there are many. Yes, I'm not getting you. Try by. You should try by all means to send the link to group, sir. Which link? For, for the meetings. Some people are very involved. They are very involved. All the videos. Now, all the, the videos. On the videos. The link, sir. Which link? No, the link. The, the one Mr. Ansoff sent yesterday. No, that one is on Wedi, Vamdala. Who copying a film? Watch Tanan. Watch and people are failing. People are failing to do that, sir. Oh, yeah. The problem is my, my phone has the, the camera damaged. So I cannot access the WhatsApp on the computer, but on the phone. So I'm just pasting the links and whatever on Word and send to this phone to put it on your on your group. But I still think, strongly think it can be, it still is good to work. Yes, it, that, is, it is, but some people are very good. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, I'm really sorry for that. I, I'm sorry. Okay, let me just uh, unmute Mr. Mwape. Vamwape. Vamwape, unmute yourself. Vamwape. Mwape, unmute yourself. Mwape wanted to say something, but he has just muted himself. Okay, I think, uh, are we? Okay, Elijah? Achanda. Landen Tumf. Okay, na tote. Okay. Where is your sir? Mr. Ikachan. Basa? Yeah, yes, Mr. Malung. Yes, sir. How are you? You are able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you able to hear me? Very well, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you are able to hear me? M. Kwai. Okay. Uh, my concern is uh, I'm seeing uh, colleagues here hiding their identity. Is it possible that they can give us uh, their full name so that it's easier for us to identify them? Yeah, mm -hmm. Gentlemen and ladies, you've heard that you are hiding your identities. Let's have your full names. Like this one, Elijah, but we party Galaxy, Galaxy A2 Co. We need your name, by Elijah. We love you some. Hmm? Vairaija. 
We can question that you know. You wait, but I have to go back to the day. Eh. Okay, I think um, if there's nothing else, I think this is what I thought we should share today, uh, both in terms of wildlife and in terms of um, GIS. Still tomorrow is the same time, okay? Just to help uh, inform others. Now, when you talk about the video, the problem with the video is that, yes, I'm, I'm recording here, but the size, it will not uh, be, be good to put it on WhatsApp. Ire kulana ni our space. You understand what I mean? So please just encourage your other colleagues to make effort to join. Apata kulia tinao chero na ngufe session ili pakati you can join. Okay? Otherwise, uh, thanks very much. Not you can dine dine. Na 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 kasaranga na kariakantu.